Yo, what up, everybody? Cameron Van Hoy here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's talk about intellectual property, IP. As an artist, you create things, right? You create worlds, stories, songs, music, film, paintings, all kinds of stuff. Within that is IP. And oftentimes, too often, artists do not get to control their IP. They, you know, sell it or license it away to many times like egregious ownership terms, often for some money up front you know, um, but it just completely mitigates your control and ownership and participation on the back end. Or you're trying to partner with like someone who might have distribution means and for that service, they're providing the distribution service, you're giving away again, your IP, you know, and, and your participation in it, and your control over it. And, you know, I think this is a problem. One of the big lessons that I learned early on in my career as a filmmaker was it was in this, uh, just in like the licensing deals with foreign sales companies. You know, as a filmmaker, you're often selling your film to two parts, the domestic and the foreign. And most of your money will come from foreign. Most of your sales will come from the foreign market. And a lot of these companies, you know, especially your first time out, if no one tells you like, and, and this is something I don't think they teach you in film school, and they really should teach this to filmmakers, is you know a good deal for foreign and domestic because a lot of times they'll come in and they will take egregious terms. You know they'll take, they'll ask for like twenty years licensing on your film. That means they control the movie for however long the term is, and twenty years is a long time to control and monetize that film. And there's many ways they can monetize it outside of just selling it themselves. Once they have a catalog, they then go to other platforms and say, hey, buy or license our whole catalog from us. And you're just one piece, including this larger catalog. And they can do that with like side deals or renewing deals or turning off other types of merch or running a theatrical and then also selling the DVD in various markets. And the longer that term is, and the more egregious the deal is, the longer you will be separated from the thing that you've created. So terms are super important. I don't think you should ever give away your intellectual property on a deal anyways. Even if you're you know, licensing and determining a term, maybe make clear if you can that other forms of IP you hold. One of the things that I've started doing with my movies as I've you know, gone on to make more films is retain more and more of the rights, the ancillary IP rights to ancillary products and merch around films, whether it's you know, VHS tapes or posters or Web3 components, digital rights, you know, sequels, prequels, and making sure that you're thinking about all of these things when you're coming up with deals, right? So term is something that's really important to think about and also participation. A lot of these companies will want to sit on top of your product in every single way that they can from marketing fees to distribution fees to sales costs and sales expenses that if uncapped especially can just go on forever. So whenever you're looking at these types of fees, you know, one, you have to ask why they need to sit in all these places if they're just providing one service. And two, you want to make sure that there's a real cap and real accountability on these expenses. Otherwise, they'll just go forever and ever and ever, right? Because they're going to always be exploiting new properties and yours might be along for the ride but then they can be charging off all of these expenses that really should not be burdening your project. And so once these things start sitting on top of your IP, if you do not retain it and the ability to exploit it yourself, you can get into a lot of trouble. You can miss out on a lot of upside. And I also believe that the world is moving more in a direction where creators are going to be the owners of their IP. We're going to see a lot of these middlemen companies in all walks of life and in business, I think start to disintegrate. So the more you can own your IP, the better position you're gonna be in to profit and to also just have good creative control, which is so important for an artist. I mean, as a filmmaker, you are faced with Final Cut. And this is, I don't know if it's an IP discussion, but just you know, final cut when someone else is coming in and maybe owning the IP or financing the project, they want this thing called final cut, where they have final say over the edit of the movie. And anyone who's made a movie knows that a movie is made or break there. And it just like they can bastardize your work if not treated with care, but they're doing it because they're worried that the filmmaker might bastardize the product so that they cannot sell it. And so finding that middle ground is really 
delicate. And I think I should do a video on that one. Actually, just talk about the nuance that there's literally a whole video on the topic of final cut. Um, but anyways, IP as an example, with a film that I made flinch, I retained all the IP on that movie. Also the movie itself, but the IP specifically on that, I was able to retain and I was able to drop a lot of really cool ancillary products with it that have done incredibly well. One was just merch, VHSs, sunglasses, the central character wears, posters, vinyl record of the album, tape cassette of the album, all of these things that have really stimulated one little piece of the film, which is the score and the soundtrack to the point to where really huge Hollywood films have come and licensed these songs for wonderful feats and are putting them in their other products. And now they're existing on Spotify and other places and racking up streams. And there's suddenly you have all these revenue streams coming in from just one source of IP. What we've done with our digital web three component, building digital collectibles around the franchise, the film, the IP, and exploiting that and creating community with it. What that's done from a marketing perspective, from a financial perspective, all of these different ancillaries around your IP can and will continue to be incredibly valuable. I've also put myself in a position at this point where a lot of my previous films that I made, the terms are expiring and I'm getting the rights back. So now I'm starting to amass my own little library of the movies that I've made and I can exploit those how I see fit. As I continue making films, the library grows larger and larger. So it's very important to think about IP. Most of the great fortunes made within the arts, within literature and film and music have been made by those who are able to retain real ownership of their IP. So if you're in this to win this, think about your IP as you're out there creating and fight for it. All right, everybody, have a great day.